At some point, I want to speak to Ken Wilber, perhaps in a few months when I'm strong enough to. And I know that Ken Wilber and you have agreements and disagreements, and I'm unsure of his model. But can you tell me where you both agree and disagree? Like, compare and contrast. Uh, it's going to be very hard for me to, to say that because I haven't been following his latest things, you know. I, I was following sure. him for some time. But it's it's not a, a agreement, disagreement. I remember at one time there was some disagreement some years ago when uh, I was um, putting out in some of my books that as uh, young children, we were in touch with our spiritual nature. And he disagreed with that. He thought, no, children oh. are like monsters. They're not in touch with their spiritual nature. <laughs> And I said, yeah, no, they, they can be monsters, but also they can be beautiful and wonderful and joyful and innocent and all of that. And these are spiritual qualities. That was, you know, this agreement we had at that time. And um, I don't know, at the present time, I mean, he, he is more of a philosopher, of a systematizer, of, uh, of you know, of ways of experience and knowing and life and all of that. And he's much more that way than I, I am. And I'm not engaged in things the same way he is. I think Ken will agree with me that self-reflection, a stage of development of humanity, and there is other stages like uh, immediate knowing. It sounds to me from what you said earlier about the human... Actually, I don't know if this is from a talk. I believe this was from a talk about humans' infinite potential and that we are at a privileged place as humans because of our ability to self-reflect. And who else would know God if there were no humans? Let's assume that there are no other highly intelligent living yeah, creatures yeah, and I... so on. But that statement seems to agree with what Ken said. The reason is that if we go back to childhood, we have less self-reflective capabilities. Some people may say, much like you had the disagreement, that children can be closer to God in some ways. But then if we take that further, the less reflective cognitive capabilities that we have, the more we're like the worms and the beetles and so on. So the fact that we would say, or the fact that you said in the Human Infinite Potential Conference or talk, that we're at a privileged place seems to to me to indicate that actually, yes, we're somehow somewhere higher on the spiritual development scale than children. So that's why I'm saying that it sounds to me like you actually agree with Ken from what I understood of your lessons in that other lecture. Am well, I understanding that incorrectly? But but you're, you're, you're putting two things together that uh, I don't do. Which you're talking about self-reflective capacity which is true, it's a development that human, human being has, and we don't have it as little babies. We don't have self-reflection. However, when you are in a realized place, the most realized condition is not self-reflective. It does not reflect on itself, because when it reflects itself, there's nothing there. It, it can only look forward. But the point I wanted to say is that when I say children are in touch with spirituality, I don't mean they're self-reflective. I mean they're being. When, when they're happy, they are really happy. You see, the happiness is pure. And sometimes they're happy for no reason. They're just gurgling. And for me, that is a spiritual quality. They might not know it. They might not know they're happy. They know self-reflection. Self-reflection is actually is a good human quality. It's a necessary human quality. But at the same time, it is the beginning of ego. Without self-reflection, we won't have ego. You see? And self-reflection is, is important for spiritual practice in general, or even for inquiry, the way I do it. We do need to have self-reflection. But... Uh, Selfish is one capacity that consciousness has, but, but consciousness also can know itself without self-reflection, can know itself by being. That's that, that the English word gnosis comes from, you know, or noesis in the, the way the Greeks say it, is that I know myself by being myself. I'm not reflecting. It's like I'm in, in, in expanse, a medium of consciousness, and this medium aware of itself at all points of itself. And it is this medium is speaking to you. 
So it doesn't need to reflect on itself. It sees through itself. It's a whole, the whole medium is, is not just within my body, it's outside of my body too. So that's not self-reflection, that is known by being, which is the, 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 the true spiritual capacity that people need to uh, develop to uh, have a realization. And that is actually what the Sufis are trying to refer to by talk about taste, because taste is more intimate than seeing, Taste something, it's, it's, it's you know, inside or, or touch or, or touch. It's, you, have, you have to touch, I mean, you're really Im immediate, you're more direct. And the same thing with taste is even more immediate, it's, it's inside you, you see, while seeing is over there, you see. So, immediacy is a very important part of spiritual, all spiritual uh, experiences. There's no immediacy of experience, which means no, it's beyond self-reflection. It is not a spiritual experience yet. 